Hey, my name is Isil Khan, and in this video, we'll be learning the length determination of the transition curve. But what's a transition curve? Remember, a transition curve is just a non-circular curve, and according to N. N. Basic, a transition curve may be defined as a curve of varying radius. The radius of a such a curve varies from the infinity to a certain peak's video. This definition is taken from serving and leveling by N. N. Basic. And a transition curve is always provided on both ends of circular curve. Remember, our approach is not to talk about the transition curve. Here, our approach is to determine the length of the transition curve, and there are of course many methods to determine the length of the transition curve. For this approach, to make it easy, let me just draw a nice table for this. The first column of this table will represent the serial number, and then the description about the formula, and then in the third column we'll write the formula. Let's talk about the method number first. By definite rate of super elevation, we can of course determine the length of the transition curve using the same formula n times h divided by 100. This will give us the length of the transition curve in meters. The definite rate of super elevation may be adopted as 1 in n, and of course h represents the super elevation in centimeters, and l represents the length of the transition curve in meters. And the method number second is based on the radial acceleration rate, and of course we can use the same formula, vq divided by a times r. This will of course give us the length of the transition curve in meters where V is the speed of vehicle and meters per second and A is the rate of radial acceleration. Also L represents the length of the transition curve in meters. And the third method is based on arbitrary gradient. And for this approach we can use the formula as H times V divided by A. This will give us the length of the transition curve in meters. Where V is again the speed or velocity of vehicle which can be in meters per second, h is just the amount of super elevation, and a is time rate in centimeters per second, which may be from 2.5 to 5 centimeters per second. So by using these three formulas or these three methods, we can easily determine the length of the transition curve. I think for better understanding, let me just do an example, and I'll do just only one example over here. Let's say in this example, we are asked to determine the length of the transition curve if the maximum super elevation is 15 cm and we are asked to assume the rate of super elevation to be 1 in 4 OO. As the data is just enough to determine the length of the transition curve, so will come directly into solution. And in the solution, as you see in the example terms, we are given the maximum super elevation and the rate of super elevation. So you can guess which formula should I use from the table. Let me just show you the table once again as we did a few minutes ago, this one. As you see, the method number first is by definite rate of super elevation. And in the example terms, the maximum super elevation and its rate is given. So of course I can use this formula. So the length of the transition curve must be n times h divided by 100. Now by doing some plug and chug in like the length equals the n is known. That's 1 in 4 OO. So 400 times the h is known. That's the maximum super elevation which is 15 centimeters divided by 1 OO and that's of course just the length of the curve. This must be 60 meters. And that's it. This is how we determine the length of the transition curve. Hey, at the end, if you like the video, make sure you thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you dears for watching. See you next time. Hello, salam.